Hello, welcome to the uh, 2023 PMTS trade show. Um, I'm Mike Hale with Star CNC, uh, Ohio office. I'm going to show you guys and show, uh, show you that one of our brand new models, our SD26 Type S. Uh, this is a true one inch Swiss machine. Uh, we have several different varieties of Swiss machines, 20 millimeter all the way up to 38. Um, this particular model was designed for mainly the orthopedic industry, uh, trying to keep up with the demands of uh, the latest challenges of um, keeping, you know, keeping up with the latest designs of all the medical screws. Uh, one of the biggest things that this one inch Swiss will do is uh, really focus on the B-axis type capabilities. Uh, nowadays, um, a lot of medical screws have more than one thread that leads into other threads, a double lead in, into a quad lead, uh, and you have to be able to equip the machine with different types of functions to be able to accommodate that for. Uh, this particular machine, being a Type S, this is our higher end of the SD26 line. Um, one of the biggest things is the double B axis. So we have uh, one side of the B axis with a four spindle counter face, ER16 in front, ER16 back. Um, B-axis capability for angle hole drilling, surfacing. Uh, also four additional spindles be able to work on the uh, back working as well. Uh, th but the biggest feature is this uh, second B-axis, which is a cartridge type B-axis. It's going to have uh, several different uh, holders that we can accommodate in there. This particular uh, holder is a double whirling unit, which is also, like I said, controlled by a B-axis, uh, which is nice when you have screws with multiple threads, you'll be able to change the helix angle of the actual thread whirling uh, via the program versus manually adjusting. Uh, both these B-axis are linked together, so if one B-axis is moving, they both are going to move, B1 and B2. We're going to be able to go from a zero degree to a 90 degree, and then 45 degrees past that. Uh, and that the 40, uh, 43, 45 degrees past that is what's going to be able to work on the back. Uh, this unit, like I said, was cartridge type, so you can have the double whirling unit as such. Uh, you can pull that out, put a single whirling unit in, a face milling unit, gear hobbing, or uh, all, uh, all other sorts of uh, holders. But again, they're interchangeable. Uh, another feature is this is a horseshoe type slide or a box slide, uh, which really helps out with uh, chip control. Uh, our actual cutoff is in the back, which also it has the two turning tools in the back. One's a cutoff and one's a turning tool. And the tool holders themselves are inverted to where the chip flow goes directly down inside the bin. Uh, a couple other improvements that is made on here is the size of the opening for operator um, accessibility. Accessibility to the subspindle to change over collets, long parts ejection. Um, they also kind of offset the waist of the machine to be able to get a little bit closer inside the work area for setup purposes and accessibility. Uh, another big feature of this machine is the actual back working block, which will accommodate eight tool positions. They all can be static, they all can be live, and the back four stations are capable of cross milling. And another thing they added was a half inch OD turning tools, two positions, uh, to be able to use regular ISO turning holders. Um, one thing you cannot see with the gang slide being where it's at right now, there's additional tooling stations back here and the four live tool stations back here uh, are also cartridge. Okay. And right now we're gonna actually run the machine so you can actually see the B, both B axes in motion. The other feature is actually having a roll-up door like that instead of a side opening door. And what it's doing right now is it's starting to back working the actual OD turning with the two turning stations as the front's drilling the screw cannulation, the deep hole drilling. It's peck drilling right now. And a second here, just like all uh, screw production, 
Uh, we're always going to turn the nose of the screw first, mill the, any kind of cutting fluid it may, flute it may have, whirl the thread, and then come back in to deburr it. One of the nice things about having a B-axis to be able to adjust your helix angle is when you're trying to tweak in the actual thread form of an orthopedic thread, instead of having to manually adjust it to try to get the right clearances on the flank angle, on the lead angle of your threads, it's, it's just merely just an offset or a, a program change versus having to manually adjust it. Now, as you can see right now, it's whirling the very front single lead. And again, each position of this whirling unit has two different form types. So in, in other words, it's going to have two different helix angles on the same holder. So inside the program is going to have a B adjustment for one thread form. And for the second thread form, it's going to have a, a completely different angle. And again, this is all offsetable. Now it's coming in right now for the second thread. And again, you can see both B axes moving simultaneously. So they're all linked together. One of the things I didn't mention though, is that back slide it actually rides on a dovetail. It's a dovetail construction that improves rigidity. Uh, probably about 40 to 50% of bone screws are broached or require some kind of force in the back to be able to put the drive feature on. And with the SD26, we were able to tool up the backslide, especially when you're making a orthopedic screw, a spinal screw especially, where it has a lot of detail on the head. So the added tool positions in the backside are enabling us to use, utilize the backside to get as much free work as possible on these more complicated spinal screws. Another nice thing about having your thread whirling units on a B-axis is to be able to rotate your B-axis to where your thread whirling cutters are facing you for easy removal and replacement of the thread cartridge itself or insert replacement. That's actually a lot of feedback we got from our customer to make the changeover easy and also uh, being able to refresh the inserts. In the back side right now, it's actually polar milling. It's just going to have the polar feature, helical feature. But like any Swiss, we want to get as many parts off the machine, complete, with no additional operations. Right now, it's doing the top threading head at a different angle. The SD26 Type S has a Fanuc 30Y, 31i B5 Plus controller. This machine is also going to come in a Type S, a Type G, a Type E, and a Type C, all depending on what kind of application you guys need. This particular one is the upper level and is mainly focused towards the orthopedic industry. But it doesn't mean the orthopedic industry is the only industry that this machine can be utilized. Another feature that this machine has I did not mention was right, right next to the sub spindle itself, there's two deep hole drilling units, just in case you have deeper uh, cannulated screws needed or deeper uh, holes to be drilled. They're attached right on the side of the sub spindle with the high pressure already plumbed to it. We have our parts ejector that I just advanced, bringing out the old part and preparing itself for the cutoff. And right now is our B1 axis working, one of the spindles. Again, a lot of these spinal screws have a lot of detail on the heads. Uh, every manufacturer, every OEM has different designs for the heads of these screws and to have one machine to be able to articulate, uh, move in every single axis, surface is going to be able to uh, accommodate any kind of screw that the new designers come out with. So 
So syndrilical milling is another feature on this machine is what is utilized right now for the uh, lettering or the engraving. This machine is a Swiss convertible, so you can be ran as a Swiss with a guide bushing or without a guide bushing. Being a one inch machine, it does have 10 inches of travel, 10 horsepower on the main spindle, seven and a half on the sub. And now we're gonna cut off. And again, the cutoff, the actual cutoff for the machines on the backside to be able to direct that chip directly down the chip, directly down to the chip bin.